you are here wow we got to get some more chairs yeah sorry hey, about that hey can you guys be pals and squeeze in a little bit <laughs> let, if, if there's a safety seat between you you'll be safe tonight jesus is here all right so let's safety seat this thing up let's squeeze so we can get everybody in hey guys man i'm so glad you're here uh, if you don't know us my name's trey this is my amazing wife danielle uh we're, we're the pastors here and um man just thank you so much for joining us uh, for our Christmas service. Yes, we are so, we truly are honored that you would want to spend your Christmas Eve with us here at Wellspring. And we know for some of you, it may be the very first time you've ever been to this church. And we just want to say a special welcome to you. And we would be honored to get to know you just a little bit tonight. There's a couple of ways you do that. One, there's a QR code on the seat back of the chair in front of you. If you don't mind, take a second. You can scan that fill out an electronic connection card, or there's an old school connection card on the seat back of the chair in front of you. You may fill that out as well. Um, and if you're joining us online, wherever you are, Merry Christmas to you. We would love to know that you're joining us as well. So you can fill out that connection card in the chat section below that your host is gonna put there. 
Yeah, we're really glad you're here. There's some seats down front, by the way, if anybody wants oh, yeah, to be Oh, yeah, nobody brave, wants the front just, seat. Just come, come right, on, right on I down front. Up right down front. <laughs> hey, a couple of quick reminders before we kick this thing off. Uh, we're so glad you are here tonight. We put a ton of energy into our Christmas Eve event. That means this Sunday there will be no gatherings. We're giving our volunteers a weekend off to spend time with their family. So, so do not join us this Sunday, but, man, make plans to come back next yes. Sunday. On the 2nd, we're kicking off a brand new series in 2022. We're calling it New Year's revolution and you can even give me a little ooh, ooh, if you want to because <laughs> it's going to be fantastic it I'm really very, very is. excited about it and so hope you'll be back for us for that but I don't even know why I'm talking about then we still got a ton to go tonight oh yeah we cannot wait to celebrate this Christmas Eve with you so why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet say Merry Christmas to someone standing around you we're going to sing together again thank you for joining us We want you guys to sing loud with us. We know you know the words of this one, so just sing with us here. Let's celebrate tonight. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. In heaven and nature sing, in heaven and nature sing, in heaven and heaven and nature sing. We will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy.
brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared in the soul-filled his world A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn In glory 
Why don't you have a seat for a moment? Now, I may be biased. I may be biased because I've, <clears throat> I've never done Christmas without him. But for me, all I need on Christmas Eve is TJ singing, Oh, Holy Night. That's it. I'm good. I mean, I'm still going to talk for a few minutes. <laughs> but I'm good. I, 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 I love that song because I love thinking about that night. Um, and I want to thank you for carving out some time in your celebration of this season that gets hectic and crazy and gets filled with who's going where and did we get this for this person and when do we have to be. One of our joys as your church, um, and if you're a guest, man, we'd love to be your church. Um, one of our joys as your church is, is creating this little pocket of time, this little moment in this hectic season when you can come in it looks like, yeah, everyone's found a seat. Find a seat. Breathe. And have a few moments just to remember why we do all this. And it's because of that holy night. It's because of a message delivered by angels to a group of nobodies. To men no one had ever heard of. We still don't even know their names. Just some shepherds. Some regular guys at work. Who had no idea that the world had just changed. And the angels appeared to them and gave them a message. And that message changed their life. And if you're here tonight and you consider yourself a Christian, that message changed your life. And if you're here just kind of checking out the things of God, you're here because it's Christmas and your grandma's always made you go to church at Christmas, so you're here. I want you to know this message can change your life. And so what I want to do very quickly is I just want to share the message with you. The message that was shared by some angels to some shepherds. A guy named Luke tells us this story. Luke was a physician by trade. He became a Christian um, probably about 10 to 15 years, maybe 20 years after Jesus died, came back to life and ascended into heaven. And then he took it upon himself to write one of the first histories of the church. He started with a biography of Jesus' life, and then he went on to write what we call the book of Acts, which tells the story of the spread of the first church. And he went and interviewed many eyewitnesses to write his account. So I'm sure he talked to Mary. I've often wondered if he actually went back to Bethlehem and found some of these shepherds so that he could record these words for us. Here's what he tells us. He says, that night, he says, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby. They were guarding their flocks of sheep. And then he says, suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But then the angel reassured them. So these dudes are just out in their fields. They're just chilling. And these angels appear in the sky. And when it says that the glory surrounded them, that literally means light. So there were these floating beings in the sky emitting light. And so, of course, the angel, I mean, the shepherds had no idea what was going on. So their initial reaction is to be afraid. And the angel's first message back was a message of comfort. The angel says, hey, 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 don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And then the angel said something that changed everything. The angel said, I bring you good news. As a church this December, we've been in a series called Glad Tidings, which is just another way of saying good news. Because when the angel said, hey, I bring you good news, it wasn't like you and I think good news. Good news, I got the job. Good news, it's a girl. Good news. 
When the angel says, I bring you good news, the Greek word the angel used there, or the Greek word that Luke uses to record it, is a very powerful word. It's euangelion. It's one of my favorite Greek words to say. It's so fun. The euangelion. And I'm not just showing off that I know some Greek. I know about four words. <laughs> no, the euangelion was a very specific type of good news. The euangelion was the official declaration that war was over and that your side had won. See, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, the Roman Empire, the, the Greeks before them, civilizations went to war. And sons and brothers and, and fathers would, would go off to fight, and the, the women, the children would stay behind, and they would hope to hear news of the battle. They'd hope to hear news of war. And there would be these traveling heralds, these messengers who would come by from time to time to update them on the war. And you wanted good news. Because good news meant your son might come home. Good news meant your husband might come home. Bad news meant strangers were coming and you were going to be slaves of the new kingdom. And so when a herald arrived into town, people would gather around and say, what is the news? And when the herald declared, you in Galeon, he was declaring, we've won. The war is over. That is what the angel was declaring this moment to the shepherds and through the shepherds to us. Good news. We've won. The war is over. And when you understand that, it makes sense that not only do the angel says, I bring you good news, but the next line makes a lot more sense. That will bring great joy. Well, of course it brings great joy. We've won. It's time to celebrate. Now, to the Jewish shepherds, when they hear an angel proclare good news, the war is over, you've won, they immediately think to their current situation because they were currently enslaved by the Roman Empire. And so they hear this and they think, oh good, it's go time. We're taking down the Romans. But before they can even think that thought, the angel finishes its statement. Bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. I'll say this doesn't make sense. Because when there's a war, there's winners and there's losers. How can this good news be joyful for everyone? Well, the angel explains it with this next statement. He says, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem the city of David. To those shepherds, to those Jewish shepherds, this made sense. They'd been promised a Messiah. They'd been promised a, 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 a Savior. But they had not fully understood that this was going to be good news for everyone. It wasn't until 30 to 32 years later when Jesus was having a conversation with a priest named Nicodemus a priest who had pulled Jesus aside because he had seen what Jesus was doing and he didn't understand it and he couldn't quite figure out what Jesus' mission was. And he pulls him aside and he says, man, what are you doing? I see how you're moving. I see how, how, how people seem to be drawn to you, but you got to help me understand. What's the deal here? What are we doing? And Jesus utters what may be the most famous passage in Scripture when he says these words. He says, for this is how God loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus didn't say everyone that looks like me. He didn't say everyone that was born into the same tribe I was born into. He didn't say everyone who speaks the same language as me. He said everyone. God loved, God gave, so that everyone could be saved. See, that's the message of Christmas. That's the message that was announced by the angels. That's the message that was fulfilled by Jesus when he gave his life on the cross. That was the message that was confirmed by his father when he raised him from the dead. That the war is over. We've won. And that's a joyful message for everyone. And you may ask, okay, so what war are we talking about? 
It's the war that we were all born into without even knowing it. So you didn't know you were born into war, but you were. And so was I. And so is every single person who've ever lived. We were born into a war, not with other people, but with sin. I know it's Christmas. Somebody likes to talk about sin. But we know it's real. It's why we have guilt. It's why we have shame. It's why we have regrets. And the really tough part is that we were born that way. We didn't, we didn't decide one day, I don't believe in God. I don't trust God. I just want to do my own thing. We were born that way. We were born pre-wired to distrust God. Which means we were born pre-wired to sabotage your own earth because that's what sin does. We were born separated from God because that's what sin does. In fact, the only thing our perfect Heavenly Father can do to sin is destroy it. So we were born at odds, nay, at war with our Heavenly Father. Until he sent his son, Jesus. To end of that war once for all time. Because maybe you know the story. The baby born at Christmas grows up to be a man and he allows himself to be arrested. He allows himself to be tried. He allows himself to be convicted. He, he allows himself to be sentenced to death and he allows himself to be executed by the Roman government. And it was so that he could end the war. Because God was at war with sin and sin deserved punishment. Sin had to be killed. It required death. And so what Jesus said is, hey, dad, all these people that we love, they're broken. They're sinners. The only way we can save them is for me to take their place. So dad, what I want you to do is all the punishment they deserve and I deserve and you deserve and we deserve all of us for all the sins we've ever committed, all the sins we ever will commit. Jesus said, hey, dad. I'll take it. I'll pay the price. And he laid down his life. That's why, if you're familiar with Jesus' last words, he said, it is finished. What was finished was not his life. We know he comes back to life. What was finished was the war. What was finished was the penalty and the punishment I deserved and you deserved and we deserved. Once for all time. See, what Jesus came to share, what he came to deliver was good news. The war is over. You never have to wonder if your heavenly father loves you because he does. You never have to wonder if you've messed up too much, if you've, strode, if you've, if you've gone too far, if you've missed your last chance. You never have to wonder. That's been taken off the table. Good news. God loves you. Good news. Those bad habits you don't think you can ever shake with his power, you can. Good news. That addiction that you think has taken you by hold. Well, our God can raise the dead, so I think he can help you as well. Good news. The struggle you find within yourself to walk the path you know you should, but constantly feel yourself getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. Good news. In Jesus, that war's over. And when we truly understand that news, there's only one response. Great joy. The joy of knowing we have a Savior who loves us. That we have a Savior who will lead us. That we have a Savior that even when we fall back into bad patterns, even when we fall back to, to old habits, when we fall back, he's not there to judge us. He's not there to point. He's not there to yell. He's there to pick us up and say, okay, you good? Yeah, I've already forgiven that one too. I knew you'd do that. Okay, let's keep going. See, God didn't just pay for your sins from this point backwards. He already knows every sin you're ever going to commit. Every mistake. Good news. He's already paid for those too. So that good news tonight in me and you and us as we celebrate this moment should bring great joy. And as we allow that good news to produce great joy, let's not forget the last thing the angel said. 
that this message is for all people. See, that's the power of Christmas. That's the power of this moment is that it doesn't stop with us. It starts with us. It starts with us understanding this message. It starts with us understanding this truth. It starts with us living out these joyful lives. And as it starts in us, God uses us to attract a world around us so that they can discover the same truth we have. That the God of the universe loves us so much he gave his son so that anyone who believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. That's the gift of Christmas. That's the message of Christmas. That's why we celebrate So tonight as we pause, tonight as we just say, everything else can wait for a moment. Our gift to you is the message of Christmas. That no matter what you're struggling with, good news, your Heavenly Father can overcome it. And that as you Breathe in that good news. May your life be filled with great joy. And may God use that great joy to open your eyes to all people. Not just your friends and your family, your neighbors and your coworkers, but even your enemies. Even those that you would say have harmed you. Because see, the message of Christmas is God gave gifts to people who didn't deserve it. And so what we get to do in his name is give gifts to people that don't deserve it. We get to give them the good news. We get to produce great joy in their lives because this message is for all people. So I want to pray for us in just a moment. Then we're going to continue singing. And my prayer tonight is very simple. It says the message of Christmas will change us, but that it won't stop with us. It says the message of Christmas will change us in such a way that this gift for all people will flow out of all of us and will touch every single person in our lives. with this simple message delivered by angels to a couple of guys in a field on the other side of the planet over 2,000 years ago. A simple message that is still changing the world. Good news. Great joy for all people. Let me pray for you. God, we love you so much. Oh, and God, we are just so thankful that you gave us this message, that you sent your son and that you invite us in. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that this message will change us from the inside out. That wherever it is we're struggling, wherever the war is within us, we'll come to you and we'll be reminded you've won. And Father, I pray the great joy that flows within us will change the world around us. I pray pray this night will be a reminder for those of us who believe in you and an invitation for those who have not yet chosen to follow you. We love you and we're just so grateful. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
have a seat. I love that song because it reminds us of this good news this Christmas season that we've all received. And it leads us to this next moment, a moment that we celebrate each week at Wellspring. Hey, Wellspring, it's time to give our offering. That's right. At Wellspring, we celebrate an opportunity to give back to God because we know that everything we have is a gift from Him. And we're excited to give back in this moment. As you get ready to give, I wanted to remind you about our special offering at the end of the year. It's called the Better Because, Better because Offering. We take this offering every year. And it's Better Because Offering because it helps us remember that we're better because of all that God has done for us. And what a time to remember that than right now in this Christmas season. And so we take this offering to launch us in into the new year as we seek to bring more people in relationship with Jesus to let them know that better is possible. So I hope that you will consider participating in this offering as we get ready to take it in just a moment. I want to remind you also, don't forget we have no service this Sunday, and I hope you'll join us on January 2nd as we kick off a brand new series, New Year's Revolution. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you. Uh, for tonight. We thank you for the reminder of the good news that you bring us and we celebrate that in this moment. Thank you for an opportunity to give back. Thank you for an opportunity to reach more people for you. I pray that you bless this offering. Thank you for all that you've done tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So as the video says, as the video says, this Christmas, may we not just be people who come in here, mm -hmm. but may we be people who go and tell, mm -hmm. who share the message with others. For me, for Danielle, 
from our family, the staff at Wellspring Church. Thank you for being with us. We want to wish you an incredibly Merry Christmas. Yes, and we have one more song to sing. It happens to be my favorite Christmas song, so why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet. Merry Christmas.